Good question, because eagles do tend to be territorial when they're on their nest sites. The adults that own the territory try to exclude other birds in order to kind of preserve a food supply for them and their young. But you've got to remember, the eagle is a very special kind of scavenger predator. They are adapted to finding great quantities of easy food. And whenever they find easy food, they congregate. They will come from hundreds of miles within a few hours to take advantage of a free food supply. Now, the big free food, suppl free food supplies on the coast are obviously our salmon runs, when the, the salmon spawn out and die on the rivers. That, our eagle is really uh, the eagle of the salmon. I mean, it, it's largely dependent upon the salmon. But there's a couple of other bonanzas for eagles. Herring spawn, ulican spawn. Then, then there's smaller bonanzas. If a seal, three, six hundred pound seal, five hundred pound seal, sea lion, washes up on the beach, or a whale, my goodness, that's going to feed uh, a number of eagles quite well for quite a while until the tide either takes it out or it, or it disappears. Now, if there's a pair of eagles nesting nearby a 400 pound seal, you only have to give a little bit of thought to this. Little point in those adults defending that seal carcass from intruders because that carcass might be gone on the next tide and why get all involved? You can only eat a pound a day. So you might as well share it. So eagles have this kind of complex system. They're territorial on the nest site above the nest to defend their young, but they're not terribly territorial when it comes to temporary food supplies, which they recognize need to be shared among many. And are you somebody from the lower mainland? I'm from Vancouver Island. Vancouver Island. Okay. Right now, this year, unusual circumstance. Last year at Brackendale, they lost most of the salmon in, in the river at, at Squamish. Many of the rivers in this adjacent area had a huge diminished number of returned salmon, so there were very few carcasses available. So the, the big food supply of November, December, January into February simply wasn't there. Now, a few rivers had good ones. We had a good supply of fish on the Chehalis Harrison. Right. So we had a record number of eagles. We had 2,500 eagles just up 50 miles east of Vancouver. We had 2,500 eagles in a square mile. Huge concentration, pretty spectacular. But many areas didn't have the, their salmon, and therefore they didn't have the eagles. So the eagles were forced to move around. And today we were out in the valley looking at, I think we went to a dozen nests, and the Fraser Valley is full of eagles. Now, they shouldn't be here. The non-breeders should be on up the coast looking for, well, the end of the oolican and the herring runs are right. still lingering. But, you know, we've decimated many of the herring runs, so there's not much herring and there's not much oolican to eat either. Right. <laughs> so the eagles are spread out, and, and we probably saw 75 to 100 eagles just in the Fraser Valley that are non-breeders. Wow. They're spread around, but Looking for road kills, looking for whatever. I, I mean, no, just a, oh, oh. Okay, Richard so, is, so is beating his then. baton here. We have here. a huge bunny. Uh, we have a huge bunny run up here, um, and but and there's eagles close by, but they don't seem to go in there to find um, their food available. But they don't go there. Well, eagles are lazy. If they don't <laughs> have to work hard to catch something, okay, they don't. And what, what you're telling me is your eagles, while well, you're seeing quite a few of them, they're finding it easy to pick up scraps, road kills, beach kills, whatever it is, and therefore they don't go to that extra effort of chasing down a gull or chasing down a bunny or whatever. If they can get by by finding road kills and scavenging, they prefer to do that. Okay. So you're witnessing this adaptability of our eagles, and it's really why the bald eagle is such a successful creature. He can scavenge, but if he's pressed, he can also hunt. They can fly down gulls. They, some of them even learn to hunt ducks, not many, but some learn to hunt ducks. So, so they're a very versatile bird, and it's one of the reasons, once the eagle learned that people weren't going to shoot them, they learned to invade 
this urban and suburban area. That's why we've got 250 pairs in the Greater Valley area. You've got them all up and down the Sandwich Peninsula and around Victoria. Again, an urban eagle. They've adapted uh, to, to the, the human site and picking up road kills and well, if you're out in the Bay Area, there's all those huge bird colonies of which there's dozens or hundreds of birds die every day just of natural causes on those big gull colonies. Well, that perfect food for the eagles to scaven. Well, don't the eagles also do dine out well on chicken farms in the Fraser Valley where they're throwing the dead chicken carcasses out? Yeah, terrible. Yeah. You're right, David, but it's terrible because as you know, the Fraser Valley houses many of what I call viral incubators. Yes. Uh, these are these big mass producing places for chickens, which is of course where the pandemics that are going to take out well, that's the human said, race are uh, going to be. Oh, yeah. thank you for your call. Is there anything else you wanted to, uh, put okay. in there? Okay. Um, well, I'm sorry. I guess my time is up. I just, um, so, so the reason, the reason why and their sharing is because they have so much resources available? That's basically it, and they're a lazy bird if they don't... Um, well, no, no, they're sharing because there's not much point. These the Eagles have, you know, terribly uh, effective, well, I shouldn't say terribly, very effective talons, I mean, for catching things. They, they can kill each other, but a bird that's that potentially dangerous to each other has to learn how to curb those instincts. It's only humans that don't seem to learn that. Most okay. birds learn that. So there's not much point eagles fighting over something when there's nothing to be gained by it. So they've learned that sharing a temporary food supply makes much greater sense than, than trying to fight over it because somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah. Yep. So well, they're, I think they're a pretty effective um, predator because they have this real strong ability to also be um, very effective scavengers and combining those two is what let them move into the the urban area because it, there's so much dead garbage in and around cities that eagles like. Yeah, okay. Well, All right, I, thank I you for your call. More like, uh, you know, on um, the islands around that we've seen them. Um, we've seen, you know, many adults, juveniles all sharing the same food. Yep and not fighting with one another. So, exactly. um, you know, not not necessarily you're an urban area. But, but they do this all throughout the wild. I mean, sure. you get them on, on a seal carcass, they, one will occupy the seal carcass until it's fed, but then it moves off and, and the next dominant animal moves in and has its 20 oh, minutes to feed. And, and, and they share it that way. I mean, they, right. they, they may be too picking at a big seal carcass because they can do it far enough away from each other. But basically, they have learned to share these temporal food supplies. Wow, that's amazing. Well, yeah. it was it's amazing to watch, and I thank you so very much for taking time. Well, to I hope you watch our eagles on <laughs> these live cams at HancockWildlife.org. Oh, boy, that... I've been there since the beginning. So. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Thanks I for the bet. call. <laughs> okay, I don't even know where we were now, but that was sort of fun. And we got on the subject of this eagle because back when they were culling all the birds and they were uh, taking uh, all the uh, farms, the chicken farms out there and what's the curfew, not curfew, quarantine, quarantine. Yes. You, know, you said to me that that's the eagles picking up the carcasses because the farmers are throwing their dead diseased carcasses out in the backyard and the eagles are coming along and eating them. Yeah, I mean, and that, that was a potential travesty that they allow these farmers to take these incredibly potent viral incubators where they're producing viruses that could be totally lethal, not just to birds, sure. but to human beings. And then the eagle flies to the next farm. And, and the eagle comes and picks that up, carries that food to the... Well, it's then in the migratory bird population. And here in the Fraser Valley, this is one of the world's greatest migratory greatest bird, bir paths. bird yep. paths. So there's... Millions of ducks and geese and cranes and waterfowl of different and shorebirds, let alone all the eagles and the hawks and the falcons yeah. and, and the pigeons and the, and the starlings, all of which are feeding in these fields, they could transmit this disease into the wild population and, and spread totally toxic yeah, things, sure, not just to people, but to other species. We've got, we've got bloody geese coming here from Siberia. Absolutely. We just saw about 7,000 of them yesterday yeah. sitting at the rifle refuge. Some of the That's snow right. geese are still here, sure. and, and they all come from Siberia. So it, it, it's a, a silly thing that 
We're so damn greedy as human beings that we allow people to raise chickens, pigs, and so on in, in these great incub incubators. I call them viral yeah. incubators. Right here in the face of it. They should stick them up somewhere in the dry country where there's, there's no migratory birds and where, yeah. where they can control the disease. We're just inviting inviting a catastrophe and they're doing to the human the same race. thing outside of Hong Kong and every Everywhere. country in the world but, doing the I same mean, thing. We, we have the ability to send them off somewhere else. It's just that we're too damn greedy to, to, to want and to do it. We don't do it. We don't do it. Okay.